everybody, welcome back. Today's tutorial is macrame coasters for beginners. I'm Robin Goff, you're at home with me, and I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to make one of these contrasting coloured coasters. One of the measurements you need for this project are on my blog, unitednots.com. You can get all of your macrame supplies and everything you need to complete these coasters and to make the perfect fringes from there. Here's two coasters that I've made previously. This one has got seven rounds on it. Seven rounds is quite a large coaster, so you can see that there is some of the coaster around the edge, which some people like. This one is a six rounds coaster, and the difference is that uh, there's only one ring of macrame around the edge there, which some people prefer. Today's measurements are gonna enable you to do the seven rounds one. Another thing about this pattern, or coasters in general that I would recommend, is that you go for contrasting colours, but I personally wouldn't make them in white. Why? Because if you're anything like me, you spill your coffee on your coaster, people are going to wash them. They can go through the washing machine, but I don't really recommend it. I recommend people hand wash them. When people are looking for coasters, they don't generally like to wash their coasters. So we're going to do a cream and contrast colours today. We're going to be doing it in cream 5mm single ply. 5mm seriously soft single ply. The measurements are appropriate for 5mm single ply. The single ply is better because it comes out smooth over these hitches that we're going to be doing in the actual knots. Hopefully you guys can see that. Also, that's what makes the fringe so smooth and consistent as well. This is the seriously soft cord. That means that the base cord is very, very fine. Again, adding to a nice fringe effect all the way around. This one's been in use for a day, so you can see over the space of a day the fringe gets a little bit better. Uh, like I said, 5mm, seriously soft. This colour is mink. This colour is cream. This colour is the oil blue, and I only made this one earlier so the fringe isn't quite as spaced out as it could be. And this colour is cream. Today we're going to be doing majority cream and oil blue triangle and we're going to be doing it in a way where hopefully you guys can make it perfect. The other thing about this pattern is if you look at the back of it there is a little cut off cord here and in the pattern that we're going to do we're going to make it a perfect coaster so to do that we're also going to have an extra bit of cord that we're going to sew in at the end to make it flat. So it's just so you can see what they're like on the back as well. They're actually quite nice, quite decorative that way. Most people prefer to see them this way though. And like I said, if you want them smooth and perfect like this, it's got to be five millimeter seriously soft. Taking our five millimeter cream, we're going to measure 90 centimeters off the reel and then cut it. Once we've got our cream sorted, we're going to take our oil blue and do exactly the same. We're going to measure 90 centimetres, cut the end, and last but by no means least, we're going to do a working cord as well. We're going to make this one about a metre, just a little bit longer, because this cord is going to act as uh, the line that we're going to work all the way around the coaster on. Taking our extra long cord that we're going to be working on, the first thing we need to do is to make a loop in it, just a single overhand twist like this so that we've got something this way. Now depending on which way you like to tie your knots, depends on which side you're going to want your long end to be on. We're going to pull this loop to about this sort of length and leave this here. We're ultimately going to be chopping this bit off but we need to pull it to tighten this loop. We're going to be placing three cream larks heads over to begin with. And then we're going to place one oil blue. To do a single lark's head, we're going to take one of our 90 centimetre lengths of cream. We're going to match the two ends together so that we can find the middle of the cord. We're going to place it under the loop, over the top, and pull the ends through. And we're going to do that over the twist to secure this loop so that it looks like this. We've got to make sure we do them all the same way. We don't want it to be this way around where there's a line across the back. We're going to do that one there. We're going to place two more. And then we're going to go under and over again. This is quite important that you do it this way around for 
triangular patterns because what we want is we're not actually going to be working onto this chord we're going to be working on this long length that we're tying on to we're going to want to pull this like so so it tightens a little bit and then we're going to get our blue chord do the same again just add in one for this round fold it in half under and over like this that's what you should be left with then we're going to take our long length that we're going to be working on we want to make sure we don't get this confused with any other it's this one here it's right next to this blue and we're just going to pull it round and seal them off like this so we should have this for you guys to see we've got this tail that we're just going to completely ignore for now and pretend it's not there that's ultimately going to be cut off and tucked underneath and then we've got the length that we're going to be working to so for for me the first hitches this length is going to be tied all the way around like this and we're going to be working upwards doing two on each hanging string all the way around first round we're just going to use the cords that are available here so to demonstrate that for you i'm going to tuck these cords out of the way to start with here's the cord that we're going to be working on we're going to take it with our right hand and using our left hand we're going to tie this up and over our finger and through pulling the cord through so we've got just a single loop and then we're going to repeat that again don't pull it too tight so we're taking it this way making a loop pulling it through and tying it like that and we're going to do two for every cord that's hanging all the way around so when we move around to here doing the same again we're going to take this over to the right hand side we're going to lift this cord just over our finger and pull it through to create the first loop and then we're going to do the second one in exactly the same way this is the method for the whole way around so now I'm going to just unrelease these cords up here these clips are very helpful twist it around so that you guys can see we're going to totally ignore this short piece and pretend it's not there and we're going to move on to our next cords once you've got this method down, the whole coaster is easy. So here's our cord that we're working on. Now we're moving on to cream. Making sure it's nice and snug. Here I am at cream. Doing one and two again per cord. And on to the next one doing one and two again for this chord we're going to continue this all the way around to the first blue first round is done and I've stopped when I've made it to the blue. For each round, we're going to add between four and three and two chords, depending on how big it's getting. The main way to know whether you should add a chord or not is really important. It's whether there's a space that's significant where your neck's supposed to be tying your knots. So I would say that this here is quite a significant amount of space and there's definitely room for some more cord and some more knots to go in there before I start with the blue. The other way you can check is by pressing the project down. Right, The more you press it down, the flatter it's going to have to be, the more it pulls the knots outwards to be at the correct circumference. So now that I've pulled that down, you can see that here there is quite a significant amount of space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a length of cream. 
and do exactly as we did at the beginning, which is just fold it in half and place it onto here in the same method. So that's under, over, and pull the tail through. I'm going to tighten it. And as you can see, that action creates two almost hitches here so that it blends. It looks the same as the other layers. And now I'm not going to tie this. I'm just going to leave it as that because when we come around to do the next row, there isn't going to be that space there and the next row is going to be much better off for it. So that's that. For the blue section, because we want our pattern to get gradually bigger, but in a nice way that is uh, consistent all the way over, what I'm going to suggest is that when you hit blue, you always tie the first cord that's available, making sure that it sits a little bit further along than the last one. You can do that by pulling these cords a little bit tighter. And then for this row, we're definitely going to add a blue in here because hopefully you can see that is way too much space for us to be tying. Same method with the blue as it was with the cream, which is take a length, find the ends, fold it in half, pull it under, over and through. Tie it on, but don't tie any knots here. Just leave it so that it benefits the next row. Then we're going to move on. Tie in our two hitches here. That looks quite sweet. And again, if you flatten the project, see what it looks like. I would say that that is absolutely fine. So I'm just going to continue now all the way around until I reach the blue again. This time, I'm going to be conscious of the space, though. I would say that this is OK. So I'm just going to tie my hitches here without adding any cord on. But after that point, I can see there's a significant gap here. So we're probably going to end up adding four extra three or four extra creams on here. That row is finished, I've stopped at my blue, and as I said before, my preference is to always tie the first blue, but I can see to grow this section of blue, I'm gonna to have to add some more cord in next. Even though that there is technically enough space for it, I'm gonna add it in. The more I press my project down, the more flat I want it to be able to be. Despite my prediction, I actually went all the way around and was pretty comfortable with the amount of space between everything because we added so many in the last row. So I only actually ended up adding one just here before the blue section. Uh, because I want my blue section to grow though, I am going to end up adding one in here, just squeezing an extra one in. Like I said before, I prefer to tie my first blue on a cord that is already existing. I can see from the previous row that these are the cords that we added in. So this is definitely going to be a wider row if we add more in. So I'll tie those as well. It says you can always squidge the knots a little bit closer together and make lots of little micro adjustments as you go, which is what I'm doing here. I think I'm going to add in the blue just here. 
after this one where there's most space. Making sure when I press the cords flat that we've got enough tension in the knots, that everything is sitting flush to the table still. Yeah, I'm going to go for it here. It is a bit of a squeeze. We probably don't necessarily need loads more blue for the next row. But what that'll mean is by adding the blues in here, we're going to add less creams as we go around. The whole process is about making little micro assessments to make the perfect coaster. Right, I've added that extra blue in here. Looking at that, I'm pretty happy with how this is going. So I'm going to work my way around the cream again, hopefully not adding in too many cords. And I'm going to stop again when I get to this blue section. Now we're getting on to doing the last part of the project. Starting at the blue again. Now that I've made it round to the blue, I'm going to go ahead and stop here and I'm going to unleash the project, cut all of the cords. I'm going to cut them about this sort of length. I'm going to take my pet hair brush with the wire combed edges and gently going to start brushing the ends first. I like to brush it directionally to the opposite way that it's flowing. So if you give it a bit of an angle, hold it down, then it starts to separate nicely. Once we've got the majority of the twist out, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. So I'm going to recommend that this bit just gets sewed here. And I'm going to say that it's absolutely safe to just cut this middle one off here. That's no problem at all. It's not going to unravel the project. And with this one, you just need to put a little stitch in there and then give it a trim. Anyway, the main thing that I wanted to show you guys was that once you've got your fringe quite long and well combed you really want your fringe to be very very short actually it's important that you can see that on this project it's only just a little bit over the top tip to get it sorted is to get a cutting board or a mat something uh this is one just from obviously out of my kitchen but you can get proper crafters chopping boards however you want to do it and then the practical tool that you need is this. This is a rotary cutter. Um, these are very, very sharp and you've got to be very, very careful when using them. Uh, children need supervision from an adult. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comb little sections out as round as possible. Onto my mat. And then I'm going to start and I'm going to do it little by little move these out of the way. It's good to have it so that you can rotate it around as you go. So I've extended my blade. I'm going to bring it to about halfway, press down very hard and try and do it in one action, not little micro actions, and then sweep the cords away. I've spent a bit more time cropping and shortening the fringe on this one. Final thoughts, conclusion. I've flipped over and trimmed the back. 
I've left this length here instead of trimming it to be honest with you because I thought it looked a little bit better just ticking underneath. Here we go. I personally think that the darker ones are a little bit more effective. I like to cut them all about the same. So hopefully you can see that that's one, two, and three. This is what a slightly larger one looks like. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to teach macrame for free online.